This is Algebra 2, Lesson 116, page 470. Do not forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and share this video. All right, probability. Lesson 116. What is probability? How it's a likely fraction. an event is. How likely a specific event is. So the probability of any event is equal to the favorable outcome over all the possible outcomes. That's what probability is. Now, probability can be expressed as a percent, as a ratio, or as a decimal, right? Any three of those ways is acceptable. But let's suppose I have um, five red marbles, four green, and then six yellow, all right? And I decide I want to pick one marble. This is the simplest probability. If I pick one marble, what's the probability of picking a green marble? The probability of a green marble is four out of 15. What is the probability of picking a red marble? Yeah. And what is the probability of picking a yellow? <clears throat> what is the sum of all of those probabilities? 15. The sum of all of the possible outcomes, the probability of all the possible outcomes, will always equal 1. <clears throat> so the probability of an event, it can range from 0 to 1. So if I asked you, what is the probability of me picking a purple marble? What would that probability be? Zero. zero. You see how it can be 0? Probability can actually be 0. And then what if I just have 5 red marbles? What's the probability of me choosing a red marble. One, because no matter which one I draw, it's going to be one red marble, right? Wait, why would it be zero? <clears throat> because there's no purple marbles. Oh. Okay. And I'll never pick one. Get it? Yes. Red, if I just have five reds, the probability would be one. Every time I'm going <clears throat> to pick a marble is going to be red. All right. <clears throat> so when we're talking about the fundamental counting principle, we're talking about the denominator. How do I count all the possible outcomes? All right. So lock that in your brain. When we talk about the fundamental counting principle, we're saying fundamentally, how can I count all of the possible outcomes? And there are really two ways. I can either count without replacement. All right, so we'll go back to our red, green, and yellow. I have five, four, and six. Uh, without replacement, or I can do with replacement. With replacement. So if I have two events, all right, so let me explain to you what an event is. An event is like, in the case of the marbles, actually drawing a marble, all right? Literally, that's the event. The event is choosing a marble. So if I have two events and I say I'm going to pick two marbles, and I tell you um, what is the probability 
and I'm gonna replace them. So I'm gonna draw one marble, I'm gonna replace it, and then I'm gonna draw another marble. What is the probability of first picking a red one and second picking a green one? And with, with replacement. Okay, here's the key word, and. When you hear the word and, it is actually, they are independent events. They're called independent. Independent events. That, what is an independent event? An independent event says that if I pick one marble first, the second marble I pick is not at all dependent on what I picked first. Got it? Make sense? When you hear the word and, and this is always true on the ACT, when you see the word and or both, you are multiplying. So independent events, we are multiplying the probabilities. So you take the probability of a red, which is five out of 15, and multiply it by the probability of green, which is four, I still have 15 marbles, because when I picked the red one, I put it back in, and then I still have 15. So, whatever that is. What's 15 times 15? Two, is that 225? 20 over 225, and you would simplify that, all right? Now, that's an independent event. It's two events. Now let's suppose I had what is called mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive. Whereas independent events, we typically have two events, and you see the word and. With mutually exclusive events, you typically see the word or, and it's one event. So a question for a mutually exclusive event would be, what is the probability on one draw I pick a red or a green. So probability of a red or probability of a green. One draw. So you add. So you're adding. When you see the word or, you're adding. They're mutually exclusive. So we're gonna add the events. So it would be five fifteenths plus four fifteenths, which is nine fifteenths. It makes sense? Everybody understand that? All right, so that is with replacing the marble. If I'm not replacing it, if I'm drawing a red one out and the next one I'm drawing a green one, we have to decide, is the order that I draw them, is the order that I'm drawing them important? Like, does it matter if I pick a red one first and then a green one? Or does it, do you just want a red and green after two draws? Like, you don't care the order. Does that make sense? Order matters if we have without replacement, all right? If order is important, it's called a permutation. All right? If you don't care, order is not important,
It's called a combination. All right, so let's just look at permutations and combinations, all right? <clears throat> without replacement. All right, let's look at the numbers one, two, and three. All right, I have three numbers. I'm going to choose three numbers. If order is important, then we have a permutation. There are always more permutations than there are combinations. So, First draw, I could pick a one, second one a two, third a three, or I could pick a one, then a three, then a two, or I could pick a two, then a one, then a three, <coughs> or I could pick a two, then the three, then the one, or I could pick a three, then the one, then the two, or a three, <coughs> then the two, and the one. So there are actually six permutations for choosing those three numbers. But if I'm talking about combinations and I just don't care what order I pick them in, there's only one combination. It doesn't matter if I pick one, two, or three first. It doesn't matter if I pick one, two, or three second. And it doesn't matter which one I pick third. Whatever I pick, there's that's just one combination. Make sense? All right. So the way we calculate permutations is I have three picks, right? Because I'm picking three letters. How many do I have to pick in the first pick? How many options do I have in the first pick? How many options? Three. Three options. Now, I've already picked one, so how many do I have to choose now? Two. Two. And then lastly, how many do I have to choose? Mm -hmm. That is called three factorial. So three factorial, do you see the factorial button? Yeah. It's shift, what is X, it, shift? X minus one. X to the negative one. All right, that's factorial. So if you do three factorial, you get? Six. Six, right? All three factorial is doing is taking whatever that number it is, is, and it's times every number below it. So six factorial would equal what? Six times five times four times three times two times one. Got it? Does everybody see factorial on your calculator? Mm -hmm. All right, so with permutations, we have this factorial. Or... And we're only talking about the denominator. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to take off combinations right now. Let's go back and rewrite our possibilities. One, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, two, one. All right? So this is my denominator. There are a total of six possi possible um, orders that I could draw these numbers in, right? And then I could say, what is the probability of choosing two, three, one? Well, that's only one of the permutations out of all six. So that probability would be one sixth. A unique outcome is one over, and this is our fundamental counting principle. How do we count? the total possible outcomes. Got it? All right, we could also do this in our calculator. <clears throat> yes? So the denominator, you always have 
calculated as the lar largest number with the estimation one? Um, or did you just multiply them all here? Three times two times one. It's it's the however many you're choosing, okay. right? We were choosing three. I could have. Yeah. I I could have put. Okay. Let's let's do another example. What if I put one, two, three, four, five, six? What if I now have six numbers and I'm only choosing three? How many options do I have for this first number? Six. Six. For the second one? Five. For the third one? That would be my denominator. I would not use six factorial because I'm not choosing every number. Got it? Yes. You see the difference? All right. All right, so we'll do this one and we'll do the one, two, three. All right. Knowing these are permutations, you have this on your calculator, it's either by the multiplication, I think that one's on the multiplication, and NCR is under division, by the division button, do you see that on your calculators? Yeah. That's okay, P is a permutation, C is a combination, all right? Let's say we have six numbers, we're choosing three, all right? And order matters, got it? So you're going to do 6 NPR 3, and that's going to give us our denominator. Can you do that in your calculators? 30, 30 times 4. We should get 120, I believe. You got 120? Yeah. Did y'all do it? Do get get huh? I do get that. I do get that up here. Well, because there are six numbers. Well, because I did 6 times 5 times 4. Which is the same thing that your calculator is doing. Right? Okay, so there's 120 permutations. But, but how many combinations? Six, I'm combining three. How many combinations are there? 20. 20. Because I don't care the order. There's always, always going to be fewer combinations. The majority of the time, we deal with permutations because order typically matters. Like if I have three positions open, a vice president, a president, and a secretary. So I'm gonna choose three people out of this classroom. Does it, does order matter? Does it matter who I pick for vice president or president or secretary? Or can I just pick three people and randomly put in that? What, what would I do? It matters. Order would matter. I don't want somebody I think should be the secretary to be the president. Or so, you know, order matters, right? If you're on a baseball team and they choose the batting order, do you think order matters? Yeah. Order matters, right? I'm not just going to say, you nine boys, just go figure it out. I don't care how you bat. That is not good strategy for baseball, right? Got it? All right, so do you understand independent events? If I have an independent event, events, it's typically two events, and I am multiplying those probabilities, right? If, it, if they're mutually exclusive, it's just one event and I'm picking red or blue. I don't care which one I get. I just want red or blue. I'm adding. That is when we are replacing. When we're not replacing, then we have to decide, does it matter the order that I pick them in? If order matters, most of the time it does, it's a permutation. And that's always going to be a bigger denominator. If, if I don't care about the order, then it's going to be a combination, and that denominator is going to be less. All right? <clears throat> Make sense? All right, so look at example one on the top of page 471.
How many different ways can the numbers three, five, seven, and eight be arranged? What are the next words? What are the next words? Be arranged. In order. In order. So that tells me this is a permutation. Got it? And if no repetition is permitted. All right? So I'm doing, four, I just like to do the boxes, right? We can do this both ways, all right? For this first choice, how many numbers do I have to choose from? Four. Four. The second one I have Three. are two, two times one. So you can do four factorial. Yes? Wait, so I thought you were only supposed to have three boxes. In this case, it wants to know how many different ways can I arrange these four numbers? So I'm picking all four. Okay. Got it? So you can either do four times three times two times one, you can do four factorial, or you can do four permute four. All right, so do it. Somebody do 24. four factorial. Is it 24, four factorial? What? Did you get four P4 <clears throat> and you got 24? It's also 24. Right. Do you see that? Did everybody see that? So that's just the possible outcomes. 24 different arrangements of those numbers. That's not the probability of any specific outcome. That's just all the possible outcomes. Make sense? All right. Now look at example two. All right, how many four letter signs? So now we're gonna have four letter signs can be made from this word. If repetition is permitted. So when I draw one, I'm putting it back and I can draw it again. I can repeat that letter. Got it? All right, so how many do I have to choose from for this first one? One, two, three, four, five, five letters. I put it back. How many do I have to choose from? Or five to the fourth. However many letters I have raised to however many times I'm drawing. This is the one with repetition. That's like putting the marble back, and I have 15 the next time to choose from. So, which one is it? With replacement? Yeah. It's with replacement, yeah. Repetition is replacement. Make sense? So, there really are a possibility of 625 different signs. Now, most of them probably will make no sense, right? <laughs> they won't be words. <clears throat> All right, are y'all understanding this so far? You're with me? Everybody with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, example three. A multiple choice has eight questions. So we have eight questions, and each question has four possible four possible answers all right each one of these questions is an independent event what i answer for one question has nothing to do with the other question right do you agree so i have eight questions i'm gonna draw a circle one two three four five six seven eight there's my eight questions because they're independent events, I multiply. How many options, so what are, what's the question? How many permutations of the answers are possible? All right, 
that really just means how, what are the total possible outcomes? How many different ways can I answer these questions? Well, how many choices do I have for this first one? Four. Four. And for the second one? Four. Four. Times four times four times, or four to the eighth power. And what is that? Sixty-five thousand five hundred thirty-six. That's a lot of different ways I can answer those questions, right? What's the probability I get them all right? Zero. One out of that many. So that's how the ACD works? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, except that's just randomly going in and choosing, right? You have studied and... Yeah, that's, that's how likely you are to pick. If you yeah. randomly pick that's the deep right deep. answers. That's and deep. we're talking random, right? Not having studied. That's why studying is important, yes. Didn't you say the earliest they come, the ACT scores come out was today? Today. Today is the day. Oh, no. So you should check. Wait, okay. today's the day we get them back? Today is the earliest they are available. Yes. Everyone needs to check with that. And I every, want to check. Check it. Okay. Let's go on to, we have a couple more examples. Let's go. That was a problem. Example four. Problem process, How many three-letter signs, okay. We have three-letter signs can be made from the word Okay, y'all, I'm going to change the word. I'm going to change the word. To, um, okay. <laughs> How many three-letter words? So I adjusted. How many three-letter words can we make from Did that word? Can we count the S once or three times? You only count the S once. Okay? So how many different letters Five. do I have to choose from? Five. Did it say order mattered? Did, are we replacing them? If no repetition, no repetition. Okay, let's say repetition. Let's say repetition allowed. Repetition but, but, sucks. Uh, right. We don't use that word at separate class. Five times it's five times five. Out. Okay, now. I guess in my class. But... I know, I even think I started spelling it wrong. Repetition. Okay, now let's suppose uh, no replacement. I'll use the no replacement allowed. New Orleans replacement? No replacement, okay? When I have no replacement, okay, by luck, I'm literally talking about the number of them. So I can choose seven, then six, then five, because I may do S, S, S. that a word, though? Yeah, it's what a snake says. <laughs> All right, do y'all see the difference? So All right. what's the answer? What's the answer? Well, I changed the, it depends. If we can repeat, it's five times five times five, because I have five different letters. With no replacement, I'm choosing one. It's seven times six times five, because I could do S, S, and S. But it's the same letter, so I well, they didn't say that the words had to make sense, did it? Did they? <laughs> this is not an iPhone game. All right. Okay. Look at example oh. five. <laughs> Jamie has five, five places to put in her display. So she has five spots in her display. And she has 38 different items. How many possible arrangements are there. So how many does she have to choose for this first place? Times 37, times 36, times 35, 
times 34, or we could have done, what's the other option? 38, permute five, six, a whole lot. 60 million. 60 million. Yeah. Jamie needs to have a garage. Right. Okay, let's keep going. Now look on page 472. So all of these examples have, have really just dealt with how, how to fundamentally count the total possible outcomes. Now we're gonna actually do the probability, okay? So look at example six. Two dice are rolled. What is the probability of getting a sum of seven? Okay, I have two dice. So think about the fundamental counting principle. Or is what lands on the first dice independent of what lands on the second dice? Yes. So, how, what is my, fundamentally, how many total possible outcomes are there? Six times six. So, my denominator is going to be 36. Got it? All right. Now, let's just do our die. I know it's die, singularly, but I, I think of dying. So I'm going to say dice. Got it? Okay. So to get a sum of seven, here's what I do. I say if I roll a one on the first one, then I need a six on the second one. So that's one possible outcome. One favorable outcome. Or I could roll a two with a five. A three with a four. I could roll a four with a three. A five with a two. And then a six with a one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six out of 36 would be the probability, or one out of six. Bonkers. You get it? Then the B part of it is a sum greater than eight. So greater than eight. Now, if I roll a one here, there's nothing I can roll on the second one to make it greater than eight. If I roll a two, the highest I can get is a six. That equals eight, but that's not greater than eight. But I could roll a three and a six. That's greater than eight. I could roll a four with a five or a six, and those would be greater than eight. I could roll a five with a four, five, or six, and those values would be greater than eight. I could roll a six with a three, four, five, and six. So now my denominator stays 36, but what are the favorable outcomes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of 36. And you'd simplify that to two, five, eighteenths. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. right, one more example. Bottom of page 473. Now we have coins. Okay? A fair coin is tossed three times. There's one toss, two toss, three toss. Got it? What is the probability it comes up heads every time? Are these independent events? Yes. Yes. So I'm multiplying. All right, so what's the probability I get heads here? One half. One half, or 50%. Heads here. One fourth. One half. Heads here. One half. One half to equal one eighth. That's the probability of getting heads all three times. 